I'm going to talk about two things in this video. The first thing is how to set your working directory, uh, and the second thing is how to edit R code files using the text editor. So uh, when you start up R, it's important to know what your working directory is, because the working directory is where R reads uh, and writes files to the computer. Uh, and if you don't know where that directory is, then uh, you're not going to be able to f find any of the files that you save or any of the data that you write out. Uh, so when you start up R, you can find out what your working directory is by just typing the, the function get wd. And you can see that uh, I've loaded up R here, and, it's, and it sets my working directory to be slash users slash rdpeng, uh, which on the Mac is just your home directory. Um, so um, this may work uh, but in, if you store all your files in your home directory, but you may want to change your working directory to be something else if you happen to store all of your data and code files in a different directory, maybe a subdirectory. Um, so for example, I can go to the Miss menu here and, hit, and choose Change Working Directory. Um, and um, I can choose one of these directories to uh, be my working directory. Now, before I go, the first thing I want to mention actually is that if you want to read a file, then that file has to be in your working directory, otherwise you'll get an error. So for example, suppose I want to read a data file using read.csv, and I want to read the mydata.csv file. Okay. So if this file is in my working directory, then I'll be able to read the data and it will load it into R. Um, but if it's not, I'll get an error like this because um, the file can't be found in my working directory. So uh, one thing I can do is I can change my working directory to be, to be wherever that file happens to be. So I'll choose the uh, class directory here. Um, and uh, if I type dir in this directory, it'll list all the files in this directory. And now you can see, oh, my data.csv is in this directory. Uh, so I'm going to now I can read the file into R by type using read.csv, and now you can see that the data will appear uh, in R. So, um, so knowing what your working directory is and being able to set it um, is important uh, because then you'll, it will give you it will give you access to all of the files that you need in R. In particular, when you save files, uh, say from the web. Um, onto your computer, you need to know where those files are stored on your computer and so that you can set your working directory to the appropriate place or you can move those files uh, into your working directory. I recommend for this class that you, uh, that you create a specific directory uh, for this class and store all the files in that class. That way you don't have to worry about changing directories all the time. Uh, one thing you can do is maybe just create a directory right here on your desktop. So I'm going to create a directory here called uh, Coursera. Um, and now it, when I'm in R, I can say change direct change working directory here. And if I go to my desktop, I can choose my Coursera um, folder there. And now when I when I say get wd, you'll see that it has set the working directory to be my Coursera folder. So now uh, if you save files in there, um, uh, you, they will be there that you can re and you can read them from R. So that may be the uh, the easiest thing for one to do. So the one thing that you're going to have to do a lot of uh, in this course is to write code in R, and to uh, and you're going to need an editor to do that. So one nice thing about uh, uh, R on the Mac is that it comes with a text editor that you can use to edit code files. So I can I can load up the text editor uh, by clicking on this little button right here, and this gives me an empty file. So I'm going to move this over here. Um, and you can start editing code right away. So I can say I can create a my function, which I'll call my function, um, and um, I can it, it will start indenting things. So I can say you know x is our norm, hundred, uh, and this function is going to just take the mean of x here. So um, actually, let me just change this to y. And, and it just returns the mean. So it ignores the argument for now. So, um, and, then, and then one thing you're going to have to do is, is figure out how to get this code into R. So what you'll notice if I just type my function here, um, uh, it's not going to be able to find it because the code has not been loaded into R. If I type ls, you'll see that there are no objects in my workspace. So the question is, how do I get this code that I've written over here uh, into R? Well, the easiest thing you can do, if you just have a little bit of code, is just to hit Select All. So this is Command A. Uh, or you can go to the Edit menu and just hit um, Select All. Uh, and then Command C copies the code. And then I can click into my console window over here and hit a, a Command V. 
um, and uh, and then return, and it will paste my function into um, R. So now if I type ls, you'll see that my function uh, is an object in my workspace. So I can say my function, and it will return the mean of 100 random normal variables, which is not very interesting, but the function does work. Um, so the other thing you can do is you can save this file. I can go to the File menu, and I want to save as. So I haven't saved this file before, so I need to save as. And I'm going to go into my Coursera folder, and I'm going to save it as my function. Uh, and it's typical to add the .r extension for code files. And I can hit save. Um, and so now uh, I, I can double check my working directory, make sure I'm in the right place here. Yeah, I'm in the Coursera um, working directory. Uh, if I type dir, you'll see that uh, my, the myfunction.r file is there now. So I can just source the file, myfunction.r. Um, and um, it will have the same. It will have the same effect as uh, cutting and pasting. So I so I haven't done anything new because I already cut and pasted that function. Uh, but one thing I can do is I can write, I can write another function here. So um, let's say um, I'll call it second to indicate it's the second function, um, and it's going to take the input x. Oops, excuse me, um, and it's going to add a little bit of noise to it. And, so, and that's all it's going to do. It's going to return that. So, um, so now before I do anything, I need to. Now that I've changed the file, I need to save it. Uh, so I can just go to File and then Save, or you can do Command S. Um, and now I can source my this this uh, file into R again. And you'll notice I type ls. I got a, I have my second function there. So if I type this out, uh, you'll see that's the code for it. So now I can say second. Uh, I say four. And it returned four plus a little bit of noise. If I do it again, it'll be four plus a little bit of more noise. I can give it a you know four through ten, and it gives me each one of those numbers with a little bit of noise. Um, so that's how I write code in R, uh, and that's how I can use the text editor um, that comes with R. If I want to create a new file, I can hit this button um, again, and it'll give me a new file, and I can you know save this under a different file name if I want. Uh, I'm not going to use that now, so I can close this window. And um, and that's how we can use the text editor in R for the Mac. Um, the text editor that comes with R is very s simple, uh, but it will definitely be sufficient for this class. So there's, uh, even though there are other kind of custom text editors that you can maybe be able to find on the web and download for free, um, you don't have to do that. The text editor that comes with R should be sufficient for this class.